We're watching that Pam and Tommy show. Oh, how is it? It's really good. I bet it is. Seth Rogen is mm -hmm. really doing the acting of his life in that thing. He is making such subtle and specific physical choices in playing that character, who I assume he's basing on an act. I mean, I know it's based on an actual guy, but I assume he's basing it on the actual guy. Yeah. But the stuff that he's doing is really nice to watch. Seth Rogen, when he presents himself, is a really great actor. When he showed up for uh, Knocked Up, there was speculation that he was a new Hoffman. Hmm. Dustin Hoffman, not Philip Seymour, of course. Just like Hoffman when he first appeared on the scene in The Graduate, he was an extremely atypical to the point of not believing your eyes romantic lead. Yeah. He does have a lot of subtleties. He is a very good actor, I think. You know, it's easy for him to fall back on Stoner and oh, you know, and all that. He has a lot of permutations of himself mm -hmm. that he can really kind of bring out. Yeah, and I enjoy the Stoner Ho guy, too, so he's really good when it comes to that. Hey, I'll watch Pineapple Express any day of the week. <laughs> a movie where they gave you two endings. They're like, that was one improvised ending, this is the other improvised ending. We're using them both. Yes. Don't you know about the bird? Everybody, Everybody knows the bird is a word. We just have one postcard this week. It is a sideways postcard. I'll drink to that. Yes, but don't throw it to me until I put the wine down, please. And you know what? I don't care if it's Merlot. I'll drink Merlot. Sean says, Happy New Season Sideways. Seen it. Yes, I have. Thoughts on it. I liked it. The commentary on the DVD by Paul Giamatti and Thomas Hayden Church is my favorite DVD commentary, too. Hmm. You know, this is one I haven't seen since it was in the theaters, and I really should go back to it. I'd like just, to watch it again. Not just because I like wine, but because I'm older now. You get to see Tom and Hayden Church's naked ass. <laughs> you get to see that other guy's schlongopus. It's rare a movie can be so funny and yet so tragic. And this is from Michael Lafferty. We haven't heard from him in a while because he has been making DVD covers for all of our seasons. And he had to wait until the end of season 10. And I get the feeling that that's what's in this envelope. Oh, yes. Let's see what we watched. Oh, on the cover of this, we got Godzilla Cats. Hey. You can see that. Welcome to the basement of the complete 10th season, unboxing complete 6th season. I've never played Kick the Can, Craig Johnson. <laughs> Bad times are ahead for Matt and Craig as they watch movies from hell comes to Frogtown to getting even an artful Kate. They got fend off giant monsters, green slime, and snossages, all while insidious hecklers try to flip the boots over. <laughs> Hackers try to flip the boats while insidious hackers try to flip the boats over. But even though they're more intoxicated than ever, they'll attend a very bizarre house party, discuss projects that never come to fruition, and finally complete the unbroken line with help from a creepy puppet and a man of steel. These are always a delight from Michael. He's got a little letter here on the back. Took me a bit longer than I expected, but here's the latest DVD cover. I feel like I'm getting rusty. You're doing just no. fine, Michael. The Japanese text on the left says Catzilla. Mm. And the text written on the right says, Welcome to the basement. Hey! I don't have too much else to say right now. I do have some ideas for things to send into the basement, so you'll probably hear from me again by the end of the season. Joy. Uh, sounds great, Michael. Thank you. More intoxicated than ever. I don't know what that reference is. It's that one unboxing where I got drunk. <laughs> okay. When you go to our website, welcome to the show.com all of our episodes are there. You can catch up on any you might have missed. There are also PayPal donation buttons that you can click on to make a one time or rolling monthly donation to help support our show. Support our show. This helps us to bring you the quality entertainment we've been bringing you for the past 10 years. And now I'd like to read some of our rolling monthly donors. Bridget, Liam, Mary Beth, Luke, Austin, Abigail, Mario, Michael, Zach, Alec, Allison, Benjamin, Kevin, Larissa, David, Christine, Mara, John, Aaron, William, Andrea, Robert, Stephanie. More of our donors later in the show. That's right. How about a couple packages? Hey, how about it? This is from David, St. Paul, Minnesota. Here is a movie I watched on a whim that surprised me with its visual splendor. It does things with the medium of animation that I've never seen before truly lives up to the description psychedelic it is son of the white mare from hungary oh well 
old Soviet bloc <laughs> cartoons. Always the weirdest. That See. sounds very intriguing. Psychedelic adaptation of Hungarian fairy tales, which probably started out pretty psychedelic to begin with. Stephen from Westchester writes, Dear Welcome to the Basement. I hope the basement hasn't been flooded with these after Matt remembered his fondness for these in the last unboxing of the last season. Regardless, I hope they are as good as he remembers and there is enough to go around. Oh. This is a slightly different flavor. This is the butter rum flavored. Ooh, butter rum. Butter rum. Yeah, it was butter rum. It was not butter scotch. Yo ho. Oh, nice. And now, viewer questions. TJ DG writes, Okay, I'll put this request in the form of a question. Why don't you watch any Coen Brothers movies? I'd love to hear your extended and deeper thought on their brilliant careers. Also, Terry Gilliam. Sorry, also Terry Gilliam? <clears throat> First off, <laughs> TJ, we did watch a Terry Gilliam movie. We watched The Zero Theorem. So right if you forgot it. I kind of forgot it myself. Not a fan. As for the Coen Brothers... We can't, because we've seen them all. we talked about most of them on this show. Yeah. Adam Fink, if you could erase your memory of watching any movie, what movie would you want to rewatch the first time again? I think I've answered this question before, but I'll answer it again. It would be something with a huge twist, like The Sixth Sense or Fight Club or something like that. I would have thought that if I could have a brain-sweeping thing for any form of art, it would be to see Oedipus Rex without knowing Oh. Hmm. Because when you hear about Oedipus Rex, within three seconds you find out the twist. Yeah. But I will also say <clears throat> that most movies that I've seen, I wouldn't want to wipe my brain and go back and watch them again. Because a lot of my favorite movies I feel like I have a relationship with. I certainly would not want to do that with The French Dispatch. Because the next time I watch that, I want it to be the third time. I don't want it to be the first time again. Stephen Delane played Merlin. Mm -hmm. He also played Stannis Baratheon in Game of Thrones. I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems like an unwritten rule in movies and television, particularly in television, that if someone dies off camera, they're not dead. Mm -hmm. You think they're dead, but they're going to come back. Yeah. When Arya Stark leaves the Hound to die on the hill and he says, don't leave me, you know he's coming back. Oh, yeah. He didn't die. Stannis Baratheon died off camera and actually died. Yeah. When that happened, I thought... Is he not dead? Is Stannis going to come back? Never came back. Like the Red Wedding, you're like, that, they can't all be dead, right? And <laughs> well, all they, of them? They can't all be not dead. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Lancelot! Lancelot! That's a little boy. That's Lance a little. Noctamone. Pits and Karadok. Pick it up. Your lines are being delivered too slowly. <laughs> Dozens don't worry me nearly so much as thousands. Talk to the Shroud. No Roman Legion. Papal army. Nor God himself will protect you. Oh, he's so dreamy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Is this Rome's quest? Or Arthur's? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I hope somebody smacked the screenwriter for that line. These guys should be wearing hats. I mean, it's cold. It's winter, guys. Come on. Boy, you too handsome. You don't want, you don't want the hair to get all flattened down because you're you're so handsome. Is that it? Swing. It was pulled out of dirt and it made a metal on metal sound. <laughs> She shot that bishop in the titty. <laughs> Pelagius, a man as close to me as any, is there now, teaching that all men are free. Equal. Who cares? <laughs> I don't even know what they're talking about. You know, Pelagius. <laughs> it's important to his character. It's not important to us. Who cares about Pelagius? You know, after this movie came out, there was this big hole. Like, all the kids were like, hey, man, I think I should read that Pelagius got. <laughs> Turns out all men are free. There's a longbow. It won't be invented for another thousand years. <laughs> Seize the freedom you have earned and live it for the both of us. I cannot follow you, Lancelot. It's important to his character. It's not important to us. Here 
comes the parlay with the Saxons, and we're going to get to hear about, you know, you and I are not so <laughs> different. Why don't you just leave? Walk, Walk away. Let every man, woman, child... Yeah, yeah, freedom. Freedom. Yeah, we get it. It's important to his character. It's not important to us. Time for you to read some donors. We have Neil, Grace, Adam, Nathan, Anna, Scott, Samuel, Clayton, Abraham, Elizabeth, Jennifer, Eric, Ashton, Wilson, <laughs> Anne. Maura, Amber, Brian, Harrison, Chad. <laughs> and that's it, Chad. Thank you all. You lame-o. Give me that. <laughs> Lifesavers, you guys. Life savers, a whole box of them. No one's gonna die here tonight. You know what? I'm gonna have one at the end of the show. I'm gonna mm -hmm. close the show oh, by having yeah, a butter yeah, rum yeah, lifesaver. We're, we're, I'm, I'm there with you. I haven't been listening to records lately. I've been listening to very few records of my own lately, and I haven't been li listening to records that come into the show. But I will. I promise I will get back into that because I want to talk about. I got a big stack of them, and I want to talk about them. Oh, you'll have time. Oh, you'll have time. Oh, you'll have time, all young the, Jim Hawkins. All the time in the world. Down in Davy Jones' locker. <laughs> what else do we do on this show? I don't know, Bobcat Goldthwaite. Let's find out. I'm watching Family Affair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got two more packages. This is from Haddad in Cranford, New Jersey. This is from CS at OrangeConnects.com. This is Keith. I hope 2022 is off to a good start for you all. Here's a gift for you both for taking the time to appear on Record Crates United's liner notes a few months back. Oh, yeah. This is our buddy Keith. Yeah. He featured us in his article. Yeah. We were interviewed uh, by this online magazine about our musical tastes, which yeah. was an, an honor. Ooh. One record is Alan Lomax's American Patchwork, which is a collection of the famed folk archivist recordings from his lesser-known travels in the late 70s, early 80s. Oh, wow. I've oh. never even heard of that. Lots of disco and synthesizers on that one. <laughs> Alan Lomax's American Patchwork. Look at that cover. That's beautiful. I think I see R.L. Burnside on there. I like R.L. Burnside. I'm a big fan. Oh, we got a Record Crates United sticker. I'm going to put that on my folder later on. The other is the latest LP by Weak Signal, which I'd say is one of the most exciting bands playing in the New York City area today. Hmm. Bianca. Here's a question for you and your viewers. What's one of the most memorable musician cameos in cinema? For me, it's Tad Doyle in Singles, a movie that is almost entirely built out of grunge rock cameos. Cheers and Happy New Year to you both. Antona too. Keith. Thank you, Keith. Rock cameos. Lou Reed in Blue in the Face. He comes on, he talks about New York, and he says, uh, I, I can't stand living in New York, but I'm afraid to leave. Rock cameos. All I can think about is Richard Hell in Desperately Seeking Susan. Okay, I think this is from the same person who sent us the wig the last time. Really? I'm not 100% on it. It's a mystery. We were sent a wig last time, folks. It's, but now we have glasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Got some Harold Lloyd glasses going on there. Yeah. I, they're not... I don't... Okay. Okay. Yahoo Serious, maybe? No, he didn't wear glasses. Sorry, my memory of Yahoo Serious is not as vivid as yours. I feel like this is something that we're supposed to be getting, but we're not. All right, well, it's the end of the show, and as promised, I'm going to have a butter rum lifesaver. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so good. Mm. It's definitely not butterscotch, but it kind of is. Better than butterscotch. This tastes like Christmas. That's why I liked it so much, because I always got these at Christmas. And that's exactly what it tastes like. Folks, what a good time we've had. We've gotten mystery gifts. Sweet and tasty gifts. And we've gotten to hang out with you and entertain you. And we're so grateful to do that. From my partner Craig and myself, we want to wish you the merriest of Christmases. And a happy life. Oh, they're so good. They're better than I remember. <laughs>